Welcome back Hoi4 Gamers, and today, taking a little break from No Step Back, we are back on Kaiser Redux. And today, we will be reviving the Holy Roman Empire, but this time, in Africa. To do this, we shall start as the Congo, as they have a lot of interesting choices and paths. But to even access this path, we need to Middle Africa to collapse. And as soon as you start up the game, you actually get a decision to select whether or, whether or not Middle Africa decides to go kaput. Right out, out of the bat, as you can imagine, the situation is not the greatest, with a few rebellions happening that actually that triggered the Germans stationed in the Congo, and this will actually will be important later on. And you know, what a better way to start off this than Black Monday as, al as always. So, with the economy going down the drain and with the incompetence shown during the rebellions, a new government was needed, and what a better candidate than Mr. Von Epp, a Bavarian loyal to the Kaiser and hero of the Weltkrieg, to lead and transform the Congo into a German Central Africa. With Von Epp in charge of this mess, the first thing he decides to do is to bring some traditional German imperial elements like Prussian militarism, as well as doing some dubious decisions as curtailing some rights. Yeah, I don't want to get demonetized right now, thank you very much. Also, since he is actually obsessed with the HRE or something like that, we might as well just divide the Congo like that dysfunctional mess that was the HRE itself. And with all of... Bonnep's reforms now in place, it was time to decide the fate of the Congo. There were three choices. Either the status quo remains as usual, we just uh, keeping just the reforms that Bonnep did, we can, I, we can also decide to integrate ourselves with Middle Africa or proclaim the Deutsche Central Africa. And having gone through all these reforms, it's only natural to declare a new German state in the middle of Africa. If not, what was the point of doing all of this, am I right? And after turning to a slight brighter color and getting a new nice flag, that I'd say I really like that flag, um, it was now time to wait for the main attraction as Middle Africa still needs to go. So... 24 hours later. After waiting over a year and a half, Middle Africa finally went kaput. So things were finally heating up. Gering, as always, has gone nuts and declared war on everyone possible. Meanwhile, ourselves experienced a civil war with five factions fighting control over the Congo. Of course, we still need Bonnep for our future plans, so we need to defend the heart of the dark heart of Africa in the name of Bonnep. Weirdly enough, the game thought that Bonnef left as he went to rule uh, Mitchell Africa, as that sometimes happens, but this was not the case this time, so it actually weirded me out, but I mean, doesn't matter, we still have Bonnef, so now we just need to win a civil war. I first focus on the, on the faction right outside our capital, as for some reason, whenever Middle Africa decides to explode, the mercenaries just peace out with everyone in the Congo. Um, I think this is a bug, I don't know if this has been fixed by now, but I don't know. So I just left them be, uh, and that's why I didn't bother to take them out first, since, you know, I actually tried that before, and, well, let's just say that it was annoying. After Gering basically took control of what remained of the Middle African administration, they officially collapsed and they were technically wrong, or that's what I thought, but later down in the video you will see that I was actually wrong since somehow they were still alive, but I mean that's a bit of a spoiler. Eventually I defeated the kingdom and now focused my attention on the Belgians and I had to actually start just fighting the mercenaries by this point, but... The mercenaries are overall are just a bit of a nuisance, let's just call it that. After defeating both the Belgian factions, I only had to take care of the mercenaries, but of course, since I had to 
since I had a peace deal with them, since they pissed out, uh, and because I needed all of the Congo to continue down my focus tree, cancel commands well, came to the rescue. <laughs> But as I was dealing with the mercenaries, it appeared as everyone else was sick of getting this bullshit and formed a coalition against him. This would later again cause some issues, but that's for later. I had consolidated the Congo, but I still needed to be at peace, so I had to send my entire army to teach Mr. Getting a lesson, and where you know, they kicked his ass out of Middle Africa. The coalition and I divided the land Mr. Getting took and I was finally able to end the civil war and progress down my focus tree for the main event. With the Congo secured, Bonnep had a decision to make that would shape the future of the continent for decades or centuries to come. Bonnep was presented with a few choices, either settle down and protect the Congo at all costs, reclaim Middle Africa for the Kaiser, or abandon the Kaiserreich and push for Bonnep's ambitions and past Germanic glories. And of course I decided to go with the Germanic glory, glories, you know, like how awesome does that sound compared to just reclaiming Middle Africa for the Kaiser. Of course, as you can imagine, this did not go well with the Kaiser, who basically lost every single colony and everything in the African continent after this betrayal by Bonnep, but who needs the Kaiser in Berlin when we can build our own empire in this dark continent? Bonnep, being a devout Catholic himself, has decided to go and gather support for what he calls a new crusade, and who better to call for help than the Pope Mine himself. And what's better is that he has actually given his blessing, and actually he's also given the, the title of King of the Romans, a title once held by the Holy Roman Emperors. Everything is almost ready to proclaim the new Holy African Empire. Of course, we can't revive the Holy Roman Empire without the electors that made the old hierarchy, so it's time to name the new Prince Electors. Finally, with all the preparations ready, it's time to elect the new Kaiser for the, for the new Holy African Empire. With many contenders claiming the throne, it falls on Bonnep to decide on who will be the new Kaiser. Five contenders have claimed the throne. Ruprecht of Bavaria, the current king of Bavaria, having the most legitimacy to the throne, is the most likely choice. Alexander, being the king of a few native kingdoms, is also an option, with him being in charge of the new empire that could appease the natives. Of course, the Belgians are still a political force within the Congo. As such, crowning the young Prince Baldwin, something like that, could do the trick. A weird contender is Hermann Fagelein, but considering he's actually quite popular with him on Epps close allies, he's also an, an interesting option. And lastly, Bonnep himself could take the throne. I decided on Ruprecht taking the throne to claim more legitimacy, but I will be showing all the portraits of the other contenders, just if anyone was interested in seeing all of the other possible leaders. And at last, it was time to coronate the Holy African Emperor, who shall guide this new empire from the dark heart of this continent and bring it to greatness.
Although I think it might be weird for a guy being the king of Iberia to all of a sudden become the emperor of Africa, so I actually imagine it went something like this. AFRICA! At long last, with everything else ready, it's time to begin the reclamation of the old Middle African administration and reunite the breakaways in this new empire. With many warlords to take, let's test out the might of the Imperial Army with someone we actually knew before. Ah, it seems that Mr. Hutik here in North Rhodesia is the best it's the man suited for this test, so... And you know, preparing this 40 with army all game long was actually the best decision, as they just melted the other armies like butter. With Mr. Hutig now gone, and considering we still have to deal with many of the other tags around us before we have to deal with the Entente, let's actually do a proper montage, since we have a lot of enemies around us and actually could feel it quite well. Okay, uh, you, you remember the whole anti goring pack that I from way earlier in the video? Well, since a few techs actually joined that faction, I was actually stuck at war with Madagascar since it was the, well, the faction leader, and since I did not have a navy, I could not actually finish the war itself, so I decided to ignore them for now. After taking care of most of the other Attacks around us, I declared war on Nigeria thinking it would put me in a war with the Entente, but for some reason they never joined the war, but as you will see this war was even more painful than dealing with the Entente themselves. Actually the only one that actually joined that war was uh, Saint France or National France, but they died to the Third International so that meant that Gabon, uh, who was their puppet, was right for the taking, so I just declared war to take another attack before actually having to deal with the proper entente. The war with Nigeria was taking way too long thanks to supplies, the terrain and because they just spam out like 100 shitty divisions, so they would just keep reinforcing the provinces. Like, the actual funny thing is that I actually defeated Gabon first, before I actually defeated Nigeria, even though I had been at war with Nigeria for a few months by now. I was actually building some light tanks for the war with the Entente, but I had to use them to, in the war with Nigeria because, well, I could not break the front line. <laughs> After Gabon was defeated, the Nigerian army tried to snake its way throughout the coastline, but I managed to manage to encircle them and kill a third of their army. I managed to break through the fr uh, th uh, through the front in the north with the tanks, and after a few months of ruthless fighting in the nightmarish land that was that was Nigeria, the fighting was over. And like, thank God, because the supplies um, they were not good. Let let let's just leave it at that. But now I had to take care of the Entente, as I still needed some land to proclaim my new empire, as I was just plain old Central Africa. So now I was at war with the Entente, I had to deal with three fronts, West Africa, 
Kenya and South Africa with Rhodesia and Portugal as well. I was having problems in West Africa and South Africa, but in Kenya I managed to defeat them before the reinforcements arrived from India or Canada. I also managed to get an opening in West Africa and snaked my way into their capital and dealt, dealt with them by just taking most of the victory points. Now with the south being the only front I had to deal with, I reorganized my offensive to launch a massive invasion of the south. Meanwhile, well, while this all was happening, I was actually researching some paratroopers, and with them I actually managed to defeat one of the other na well, yeah, it's the nations that were in the anti gunning pact since they had no divisions. As I was pushing down through the Portuguese colonial possessions, they surrendered, but instead, uh, but instead they actually surrendered to the French Commune, so they blocked a part of the front from advancing, causing more annoyances in the process. Thank you, France! But with Portugal out of the way, I managed to break through on some positions on the border with South Africa, causing their downfall as they did not have enough men to deal with, their, with my army. Although I must give credit to where credit is due, as South Rhodesia actually held better than anyone else in the Entente, so props to them. Eventually South Africa surrendered and now I had to wait until the third international capitulated Canada as the Union of Britain had already launched a naval invasion in Nova Scotia. So in the meanwhile I paratrooped into Madagascar and finally destroyed the anti getting alliance. And well, technically, Madagascar was still divided, so I just fix it. I will just fix that by reuniting it. But this is when I actually noticed that Middle Africa, for some reason, was actually still alive in some islands. Um, and, you know, this is actually weird since, well, they should have died when they collapsed. Uh, long time ago, so 
Um, but Tupac was there to fix everything up. So let's just let's just imagine that Middle Africa actually collapsed and then just survived in the middle in the middle of just some random islands, you know. And after waiting for God knows how long since the game was running at a snail space at this point, the British actually captured the King Edward, and so the Entente was defeated. But just as I was, just as I finished the peace treaty, another one just fired. But this time I actually included South Africa and Kenya. So I just took my rightful claim in Africa and, and took everything I needed to proclaim the empire. By this point, I had been recording for hours and hours and hours to on end. So when I finally got to complete the focus, well, let's just say, let's just say that you will hear a man breaking down. Finally, for fuck's sakes! Yes, the Hegelianisches Afrikanisches Reich. I don't care if I butchered that fucking name. I <laughs> It only took a fuck like until 43 to do all of this. <laughs> oh, this was not worth it. Oh, God. Holy African Empire shall clean the scenes for palace colonial regime away and forge a new bear path for this dark continent. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes! Ganishes, Haley Ganishes, however fuck you pronounce that, I don't care. And so that was the end of Bon Epps Adventure in Middle Africa. I hope you really enjoyed the video, and actually, I really hope that you enjoy this change pace compared to another uh, No Step Back video which is coming out, which I will still be covering some of the new DLC. But yeah, that was everything for this video. You are dismissed, soldier.